in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, sing it, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up, glorify. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, connect to this atmosphere of worship, this atmosphere of the prophetic. Go ahead. Shali basabrande la caparados cabrige belle de barast. Shali berendos cobrandi la sivra has cabariada. The waters has been stirred. Go ahead and pray. Shali barantas cabrasca le baratos de vreze belle cash. Rakata barada balada brenda belle de bos. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations, are you praying? See Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus. Till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Glorify, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, exalted, lift it up, you lift it up, lift it up, exalted. Spirit of the living God, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you for bringing us the presence of Jesus. Thank you for your power. Thank you because we are going from glory to glory, grace to grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name we have worshipped. Shout a believing amen. In Jesus' matchless name we have worshipped. Amen. Can we give Sinaj a big koinonia? God bless you. Thank you. Amazing worshiper. Thank you so much. Are you ready for tonight?
The Bible says, the entrance of your word gives light and then it gives understanding unto the simple. The word simple there is the word meek, teachable, able to learn, willing to grow. The entrance of your word gives light, but it only gives understanding to those who are willing to learn, able to grow. He says to receive with meekness the engrafted word. The Lord is going to be changing our lives by his word. And I want you to be attentive. Please be seated. May God bless you. Honor to everyone here present. For sake of time, we'll just get straight to the word in the name of Jesus. Let me do a quick recap on our session in the morning. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After these things, I looked. We took our time to discuss this text in the morning. John said, after this, I looked. And we agreed in the morning that there were certain things that had happened to John before this encounter. And there were enough motivation for John to not even press for anything more. But the Bible says, after this, after these results, I still looked. After the grace, after the name, after the achievements, he says, I looked. And we challenged ourselves in the morning that we must maintain a posture that allows us to continue to look with expectancy that there is always more always more than our current level, always more than what we have seen. Are we together now? John from chapter 1, 2, 3, he had encountered Jesus. He had received the messages for the seven churches. And yet he said, after this, I looked. And a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking to me, which said, come up hither. And I will show you the things that must happen thereafter. We looked at a few things, three hindrances particularly, that can stop us from ascending higher realms in the spirit. Number one, we said a disinterest for God and for spiritual things. That a man can, of his will, reject the things of God. You can reject intimacy with God you can reject passion for the things of God. Scripture says it this way, draw unto me. He says, and I will draw unto you. Hallelujah. Number two, the state of your heart. We said that the state of your heart vetoes every spiritual activity you are involved with. No matter how spiritual it is, fasting, wonderful, prayer, wonderful, the study of the word, wonderful, church attendance, wonderful. But that all these activities only find their value when the heart condition is right. Hallelujah. We examine the life of Elisha, Gehazi, and the woman from Shunem. How that when her son died, Elisha sent Gehazi with a rod, the same rod of power. And he went and laid it upon the dead child. And the child would not come back to life. Number three. We said the third reason why, or third hindrance to ascending heights in the spirit is lack of proper mentorship and guidance. In this kingdom, you cannot outgrow the need to be guided. And I made a statement that I want to repeat tonight for sake of those of us who are not here. I said you will always reflect the accuracy or the limitations of the people you have chosen to follow you will reflect the accuracy or the limitations of the people you have chosen to follow, the voices you have chosen to listen to. There are many well-intentioned believers who are victims of the kind and the structure of mentorship that they have become part of. And so they reflect the imbalances, the prejudices, the accuracies or otherwise of those who lead them. It is the reason why teachers will have weightier judgments from God because 
you literally are influencing the minds, the understandings, the decisions, even the actions of millions of people. Are we learning? Tonight, we want to take it higher as we prepare to pray. I hope you came with your prayer requests. Amen. Amen. Let's give our online family a big hand clap, by the way. Koinonia Global, blessings to you. All of you who are connecting across the globe. Amen. I want to show you a mystery tonight very briefly and then we'll pray. That men can attain mastery in the spirit. Men can attain accuracy in the spirit. A possibility exists for a believer to rise and ascend to such a realm of mastery where you lay hold of eternal life, you can command results on the strength of light that you carry. Accuracy is a possibility in the spirit. Now, when it has to do with our spirit work, please let me have your attention. The knowledge of God, exploring God as a person, will never come to an end because of the vastness of his person. From eternity to eternity, even in heaven, we will still be learning God, layer after layer. But when it has to do with the body of knowledge required for your excelling, they are finite and you can lay hold of them. Please listen carefully. When it has to do with the body of knowledge required for your excelling in this kingdom, they are not infinite. The body of knowledge required for the believers excelling are finite. And like a course curriculum, you can exhaust it and gain mastery in the spirit. Hallelujah. Many believers are not circumspect in their work. Many believers are not accurate in their spiritual understanding. And so the vacillations around our results and our testimonies as believers usually are proof that there are gaps in our spiritual understanding. And so we know a little of this. We know something about prayer. We know something about fasting. We know something about victory. We know something about the blood. We are not in total ignorance, but we have not attained unto the level of knowledge that brings us to mastery. Are we together now? And so for the average believer, we can say something about prayer, something about finances, something about demons, something about Satan, something about God, something about heaven, something about hell. And we have these gaps in our spiritual knowledge and wonder why our results are not predictable. Because in this kingdom, the experience of victory is based on the abundance of light that you have. Are we together? John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And you see, please look up. There is a posture that every believer must assume if and when you desire to rise to a state of mastery. We examined it in the morning. Here's what Paul the great, Paul the apostle, Paul the distinguished had to say. He said, I consider myself to not have apprehended it was not self-condemnation. He knew that there were heights and there were virgin dimensions in the spirit that he had not attained unto. He says, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth towards the things that are before me, he says, I press for the mark of the high calling that is in Christ. Many believers plateau spiritually. This includes preachers. This includes career people. This includes leaders across several walks of life. We plateau because sometimes what we know can be the resistance to what we need to know. Are we together? I want to show you two scriptures. I hope we're learning already. In Acts chapter 18, we'll read 24 to 26. Please give it to us. Very profound story. In Acts chapter 4, 24 to 26. Please follow carefully while I read. And a certain Jew named Apollos, he was born at Alexandria. Please follow carefully as I read. He was an eloquent man. He was mighty in the scripture. What a man. He came to Ephesus, the Bible says. Next verse. It says this man was instructed. So he was not a rebel. 
he submitted himself. Someone was mentoring him. In the way of the Lord, he was fervent in spirit. You talk of zeal, you talk of passion, you talk of hunger. He was present in the life of this man. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. Please read the last sentence. One, two, read. Knowing only. Stop there. How could a man have these credentials? Eloquent, mighty in scripture, submitted to authority, fervent in spirit. He spake and taught in conferences just like this. And yet the Bible says, in spite of that, he knew only. He knew only. I can imagine that this man teaching people like I'm teaching you was so impressed with his level of spiritual achievements. If you had turned to him and said, Apollos, I think something is wrong with your understanding. He would rebuke you. Not in the presence of such zeal. Not in the presence of such mentorship. And yet the Bible says, in spite of all these credentials, he knew only. I wonder how many things we do not yet know. In spite of our zeal, our prayer, our fasting, our fervency. Now, there was nothing wrong with this man as it were. But he was still limited. Let's read verse 26. Read it in concert when you see it. Ready? And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Hold on. You see that now? He spoke boldly. You know what it means to speak boldly? To speak with authority. No, this is the end of it. If you listen to me, that is it. There's nothing more. And yet the Bible says one day, whilst he was in a conference like this, there were two strange people who were watching him while he was preaching. Watching him with compassion, but seeing his limitations. And the Bible says when he was done, they allowed him to finish. Speaking boldly, knowing only. The Bible says they took him. Thank God he followed. They took him and expounded unto him the way of God. Last, the two last words, more perfectly. So what was his problem? His problem was not ignorance. His problem was that his understanding needed to be altered. Now, you imagine such a bold preacher. Act the drama. You have an intelligent mind. So here comes this great man of God called Apostle Joshua Selman. And while he's shouting, speaking boldly, two people, people who had known God, People who had accessed virgin dimensions in the spirit. You see, they didn't insult him. They didn't do, they kept quiet. When he was done, they said, my dear brother, come. There are still things you do not know in the spirit. Let me show you. And the Bible says they expounded unto him the way of the kingdom more perfectly. Is that a lesson already to learn? Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Hmm. Come up hither. Acts 19 verse 1. And it came to pass, another interesting story. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. He found certain disciples. Take note now. Mentees. Disciples. Gentlemen and ladies under the leadership, the tutelage, the custody of someone. A mentor. So like Apollos, they were also fervent in spirit. They were learning. Verse 2. Paul took for granted the things that he had known. And he asked them a question. He said, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Hear what the student said. We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were disciples. Someone was mentoring them. With the outpouring of Acts chapter 2, the mighty things that were happening, the outpouring upon the Gentiles, Acts chapter 10, released from prison, people, I mean, mighty things were happening and here were very faithful disciples who were not aware that seasons had changed. They were under the tutelage of someone who did not even know anything about the Holy Ghost. They never said we have not received. They said we have not even had. What did he teach them? How could such a man omit the subject of the Holy Spirit? And yet they were disciples. I told you, 
you will be a reflection of the accuracy or the limitation of the people you follow, the voices you listen to. Are we learning now? Now, this, 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 is, not, this, is, not, this is not sarcasm. It's a charge that you press higher. Because if you are that person I'm talking about, then it means that the prophetic destiny of many are not just connected to God, but connected to the accuracy of your spiritual understanding. They have pledged their loyalty to you as a leader, as a man of God, as a businessman, and they believe that you know God, and they will see God from the lens of your knowledge. And if it so happens that there is a defect, if it so happens that there is inaccuracy, as far as your knowledge of God and the things of the Spirit are concerned, you will mass produce your error. You will mass produce your imbalance. You will mass produce your limitations. You will not see how dangerous it is until many people begin to walk in that error. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? For someone, did you ever know that serving God has benefits? And there are believers who will say, I was never taught that serving God has benefits. How about Psalm 103? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. And the Bible lists five of them. Who forgiveth thy sins, who healeth thy infirmity, who delivers you from darkness, you know, crowns you with loving kindnesses. And there are many people like these disciples who will say, we have never even heard that there are benefits. How about those who you can meet today and say, do you, have you heard that God is able to heal? Have you heard that it is possible to walk in divine health? And they will tell you, we have never even heard. The conference is for those who have never even heard. Yet fervent in the spirit, yet zealous. Isn't it amazing how you can be so accurate and knowledgeable in an area and totally ignorant in another spiritual area. So the Bible mandates that we remain meek. The word meek is beyond being humble. Is the word teachable. With an understanding that there is more. Sinat sang it so well. The more I know you, he says, the more I want to know you. Because I know that there are dimensions beyond my horizon. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. There are many people who cannot do much for the kingdom. Not because it's not in their prophetic destiny to be used mightily. The level of equipping and stature and stamina required to serve the purposes of God at a higher level. They are not interested in accessing the light that builds them. So God is not able to do much. The healing ministry as we know in the world today has depleted from the 70s, you see, they're just a handful of people. How about the prophetic ministry? We've seen a lot of it, but with all shades of, you know, issues here and there. And some of them not so good at all. Even the apostolic ministry. You see all the things, the prides and all the imbalances here and there. How about the teaching ministry? There are many people today who have been misled to take the grace of God to bring them back to order. Their submission and their loyalty to error is noteworthy. They have submitted to error for many, many years. And it's become a stronghold in their minds. And sometimes you have to trust God for grace to begin that process of deconstruction. Because they have become authorities even in that error. And you see, it is possible to get results in the area where you've gotten it right. And the presence of results can stop you from seeing the error in another area. I'll give you an instance. It is possible to access the keys that bring increase, economic increase, finances to your life. And because you have money, you have material resources, you can be beguiled to believe that your faith is working and you have faith. You see, you are excelling because you found the keys that control that possibility. But you will be surprised how many other areas you are deficient in. And it will be difficult to admit it because you are, you see, money does a lot in your life. It can solve many problems. And where it cannot solve it, it can outsource the help needed. So it will be difficult to see the deficiency in other areas. 1 Corinthians 8, 2. 
Let's read it together. Is God helping us already? 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. Please let's read in concert. Ready? Read. Come on, Koinonia. Let's try again. Ready? Read. Uh huh. He knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The issue we're dealing with here is not ignorance. The issue we're dealing with here is rising to a standard, a standard of light, a standard of grace, a standard of illumination that a man under God by the influence of the Spirit of God can ascend heights in the Spirit where you gain mastery. It is possible. Every time I study scripture and the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the bodies of the apostles and that these handkerchiefs commanded mighty miracles. How about Jesus? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost you and I have. And the Bible says he went about validating the presence of that Holy Ghost, doing good, healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. If Jesus showed up, if the early apostles showed up on your street, nothing would remain the same. That means there is something wrong. We carry titles today. We do not have the grace and the light to defend. And so we continue making a mockery, respectfully speaking, to our Christian experience. I am Apostle Joshua Selman. All right? So let's put you side by side. Here you are. Here is Apostle Paul. Here is Apostle Peter. Give witness to your apostleship. Now we've, we have found one thing and we begin to give excuses. Are we together now? Not Paul. Not Peter. They were teaching one time and someone dropped dead for whatever reason. Stopped the discussion, went out, got that person back to life and everything continued. And the disciples were not surprised. It was a common occurrence. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth. There is a dimension of the revelation of the glory of God that cannot be made manifest in our world until the saints ascend higher levels of accuracy in the spirit. Are we together now? The Bible says we are his workmanship, Ephesians 2 and verse 10, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in it. It's a preordination. There is a dimension of glory God desires to get through my life and your life. And that dimension of glory will remain wanting until we rise to levels beyond guessing. Levels beyond trial and error. Educationally, there is what we call the degree, first degree, master's, PhD. There are those we call consultants. There are those we call authorities. Globally speaking, that every time you are discussing a subject matter, it will not be outside of their supervision they have earned that credibility are we together now if such a thing can exist academically it then means a man can ascend heights in the spirit where god can trust you to become a reference an accurate conduit of certain possibilities that when men are praying and say lord what does it look like to be anointed you become god's reference what does it look like to be favored you become god's reference are we together now? Yes. We are his workmanship. Paint for me a picture of what it means to be a favored believer. Do you have an idea of one? Have you seen one with sufficient witness to convince you beyond any shadow of doubt? Mastery gives God room to display his glory. It can dispel doubts and fears because you become God's recommended reference. When he's teaching someone about favor and the person does not understand, he will ask him to come out like Abraham and make reference to your life and say, this is what I can do with a man whom I choose to favor. Is it not in your Bible? It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, that body. So every time God says you are blessed, he did not leave us in the dark. There is a model, an embodiment of what it means to be blessed by God. When God says, seek me, he did not leave us in the dark. There is a personality that embodies pursuit for spiritual things and the encounters that follow. He's called Jacob. He says, this is the generation that seeks thy face, O Jacob. 
Are we together now? When God says to be full of faith, he did not leave us in the dark. There are individuals who represent God's idea of faith. A man like Elijah, for instance, becomes God's recommendation when you want to learn about prayer. He says, is any man afflicted? He said, let him pray. Then he says, the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. But that does not make sense to me. I need to see a living person on earth who attained that standard to inspire me. And he says, Elijah was a like man, a man of like passion, meaning there was nothing, um, you know, outside of our normal construct as humans, except that he found a key in the spirit. I taught you something for those who are workers during our retreat last year. That every name you call in the Bible, Peter, Sarah, Mary, they are not just names of individuals, but they are spiritual pathways that lead to the evolution of a certain kind of believer. So when you say Abraham, Abraham is not just the name of a man. Abraham is the name given to a certain spiritual pathway that can make you a friend of God. Are we together now? When you say Esther, Esther is not just the name of a village girl who rose and became queen. No, it is the name of a, a pathway that produces a certain kind of believer. And one of the ways you know God is training you is that you begin to find your parallel in scripture. Now, when you begin, you may not know what you are becoming. Listen, it's one of the ways you verify that is the Holy Ghost that is training you. Eventually, you will see Esther forming. Eventually, you will see Elijah forming. You will see Peter forming because they are ancient parts. They are ordinances. They do not change. The human actors can change, but the parts remain. So if we have lost touch and we cannot see a replication of this dimension of believers, it is because we have lost the pathway. Are we together? So Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. This is his assignment. He will show you things to come. The Bible says, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. What God has in store for them that love him, he says, but he has revealed it to us. He's not left it in the dark. He's revealed it by his spirit because the Holy Spirit has the unique ability of searching all things even the deep things of God. So there are men on earth that look like God and that's how all men should be. There is something you find in the spirit that stops you from being human. There is something you find in the spirit that turns you into an entity that is beyond human. Nicodemus studied Jesus. In as much as they did not like him, he studied Jesus and saw the wonder-working manifestations of the God life through him, he had to come to him in the evening and said, listen, forget all this drama we act in the day. We know that you are a teacher come from God. He says, for no man can do it, these miracles that thou do it, except there are certain results that the economy of men cannot afford. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Are you listening, please? There are certain levels of speed that the normal course of life cannot give you. No, when 10 years is compressed in one year, it's no longer human. No, that is not human. And this is our assignment that through our lives, the excellency of our transformation will give God space for his glory to be revealed in our world. That men must look at you and ask questions. You should never pass people and then they ignore you. No, they would not ignore Jesus. Are we learning? So the manifestation of his hand, his favor, his grace. When you look at someone stage four cancer, someone on a wheelchair, someone having a crutch and with one command, you tell the person rise up. It looks like a joke till he stands. Explain that to me. Now that is a godlike manifestation. It is not affordable in the world of men. You have to outsource that possibility from a realm that is not earthly. Are we together now? Our lives are supposed to be such displays of the supernatural that it will compel all and sundry to need God 
Your results should so question people that even in the midst of their denial, they will not find rest. They have to go back and ask, what happened? The same way when people are involved in divination and all kinds of satanic things, they outsource abilities that are not human. You see them and you know, they know that they are fraternizing with a spirit. That result is a human plus a spirit. When someone wakes up by the spirit and says, I was led by God to sponsor your children until they are done with PhD. Now, that is not normal. Someone will come and ask you and then you can tell them, I give glory to God, but this was not a mistake. There is a pathway that makes that outcome predictable. This is my message. Listen, many believers who have results do not understand the spiritual workings of the results they enjoy. Even those who have results, they cannot defend its continuity. It just happened. They, they prayed, they called blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire, maybe a little communion, prayer here. Fast. They just mix a lot of things and something happened. There is no mastery. It is the reason why we fear our results because we know we cannot reproduce it. What did I do that made this my week full of favor? Monday, great calls. Tuesday, open doors. Because we do not understand the dynamics. Even in the presence of the results, we enjoy, but we know it will not last. It did not come by mastery. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. Are we learning? So come up here, there is a call to rise to greater levels of mastery and accuracy in the spirit one dimension part time that it is possible ladies and gentlemen please look at me a man can get the keys that lead to influence and no nation will close his gates towards you it doesn't matter the sentiment you believe me when I tell you this a man can lay hold of the principles that makes for the command of wealth and abundance and if you find it in the spirit I don't care what your background is or worse, I don't care the limitations. You will tame life like an animal and show through your excellency that God reigns. Do you believe that? That men can lay hold. Please listen, please listen. You have to get this. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending these higher truths in the spirit. The Bible says God made many lights, but he said he made two great lights, one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Your dominion is at the mercy of the lights that you have. If you are like Apollos and you are like these disciples, then life will look confusing. You see that now? And if your life becomes a portrait for people to learn God, you will confuse their understanding about God because your experience of God will be conflicting with what is obtainable in the Bible. So he calls us to a higher level of accuracy so that we can represent him more accurately. Hallelujah. I have challenged believers for many years. That it's important for us to celebrate the milestones that we've covered in the spirit. But to admit, sometimes painfully so, that there are still virgin dimensions in the spirit. Our results or the absence of it are attestations that we need to know God more. We need to press more. Let me tell you this. I know it happens a lot in Europe here. But in Africa where people of prayer, we pray. But the ratio of results that is derived from prayer versus the energy that is dissipated, in my opinion, is less than 10%. Yet people change their world through prayer. The problem is not prayer. The problem is something we do not know about it. Because the disciples were prayerful, yet they did not have results. So they came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. Their issue was not prayerlessness. It was inaccuracy in prayer. They noticed that every time they prayed, the situations did not change. But there was something Jesus told the sea. There was something he told men. They said, no, you have to show us something. So we don't waste our time. Remember when the disciples took for granted that light is what exalts the people in the spirit and they walk up to an epileptic patient? 
and were embarrassed, they took that pain to Jesus as a report. Why couldn't we do this? Proximity to you, yet we could not do this. And Jesus said there are dynamics to this thing. It's beyond what your eyes see. Are we learning now? Once upon a time, the disciples could not do certain things. Jesus now sent them two by two. And they returned rejoicing and said, even the devils were subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, do not, that is a lesser issue. There are still other things you would see. Nathaniel speaks about Jesus and he says, ah, is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth? And yet Jesus speaks about Nathaniel. He says, this is an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Then when Nathaniel met Jesus, Jesus said, while you were under the tree, I saw you. And he was amazed. How did you see me? And Jesus said, just for this, you will see greater things than this. That means there are dimensions. This, this is an elementary level. I mean, sight in the spirit at this level is for children. There's nothing to be excited about. He said, you will see greater things. You will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It's a realm of spiritual reality. Listen, I became tired of proposing things that I did not have the grace and the understanding to defend. So with all due respect, our churches are full of spiritual propositions. God can do this. God can do that. And we all shout amen. But the experience of it, so believers are gradually getting frustrated. This is why they are leaving church. Because the God we have sold to the nations does not work. Did you hear what I said? Oh, absolutely. They have used the lens of our testimony to mark God. And they gave him an F using our lives. There's, there's, there's a misrepresentation of God that has come because we have not ascended height beyond religion, beyond... And so God wants to correct that for his namesake. And he's finding a people. He's saying, who can I find? I need to rewrite something about my faithfulness. I need to reintroduce my love again. I need to reintroduce my power. I need to reintroduce my wisdom. Men have used the lens of weak men to mark God. And the result has not been pleasant. It's not brought God glory. It's brought shame and reproach to the name of the Lord. Are we together? They feared the believers in the early church because these guys were like gods. The Bible says sometimes they would dare not even come to their company uninvited because they were a terror to darkness, a mystery to men. After these things, I looked and I beheld and I heard a voice as of a trumpet and he said, come up hither. There is a greater way to walk in healing. There is a greater way to walk in prosperity. Was it here or back home I said that we have been shouting for a long time that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The world is tired. We are tired. <laughs> I have the liberty to say this is a believer's meeting. Do you know? Now please don't feel offended. Are you aware that the O2 Arena, are you aware that the Excel Arena has been bought over by non-believers and I hear that an injunction has been placed there that Christian activities don't happen there again. Welcome to the consequences of ignorance. Welcome to the slavery that the absence of dominion brings even upon the saints. He says they know not neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. He says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you, not some, all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. There is an economic system that Babylon operates. It's a system they have perfected for years. They have used this system to take over territories without crusades. While we are jumping in church and ignoring the other sides, we have not given room to study how territorial advancement happens. How did God intend for men to take nations? We have not learned that the battle of dominion over territories is the battle of the hearts and the minds of men. Not companies and institutions. No, the hearts and the minds of men. Territorial transformation is warfare. 
you are contending against age-long mindsets and you have an assignment to dethrone thought patterns that have enslaved others. Help those under the anointing. Listen very carefully. Are we together? I've had the honor of traveling a bit and I am amazed at the level and the extent of ignorance and the non-apostolic approach to the believer's understanding of God. We know nothing about taking over territories. We are enslaving the next 30 years of the church without knowing. And there is a subtle slavery that is going on because we do not know. We have not learned to bring the power of God. No. The average believer is poor and we don't care. This is not about prosperity and money is that the Bible says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. You have to hate poverty the same way you hate sin. Because they are both tools. You see that now. So there has been a narrative that has made sincere believers who love God, but they have been mentored sometimes, sometimes by well-intentioned people into refusing the other tools that are needed for their dominion. The price is what we are beginning to pay now. And I pray that our children and our children's children do not pay that price. Because just for instance, using economic empowerment, just for instance, hunger always takes Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is when there is hunger. So when Satan wants to lure them to become slaves, he manipulates the economy and forces even righteous men. Jacob said, I hear that there is bread, but the problem is that it's in Egypt. But since we are hungry, go down Tita. Genesis chapter 42, 1 and 2. It says, go down Tita and buy for us so that we will eat and not die. Did you read in your Bible that there was a great prophet who was owing? I'm sure it was depression that killed that man. I can guess. I mean... A prophet controls the prosperity of many people. What happened to his own prophetic ministry? That he died, sold everything, left the wife. And now they were coming to take the children as collateral. But the woman said, there has to be a dimension of God that can solve this problem. No, no. This is a misrepresentation of God. And she said, I may not know the way out, but let me go and meet someone I perceive knows and understands God better. And that was her bailout. The prophet came and said, no, you said your husband is a prophet? Go and check the house. If he was truly a prophet, there is oil there. Because you see, the Bible says there is treasure to be desired in the house of the wise, but there is also oil. So even when the treasure finishes, if he was truly a prophet, check there, there is oil. That oil can bring restoration. How about the land of Samaria? When women were boiling their children, these were not parables. That a mother becomes so frustrated she can kill her future. And the Bible says when the prophet saw this, he said, no. By this time tomorrow. And a foolish man who did not understand the power, the creative power of the prophetic. He said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, this thing might not happen. The prophet said, oh dear. You will now be a victim of your ignorance. You will see it to show that God is faithful, but you will not eat of it. Listen, there are dimensions that can be imported into your Christian experience and turn you into a sign and a wonder. The absence of them will make your life limited. The same way, technologically speaking, you can download one application from the store, whichever store, that one application can make you so efficient. You see that now? That he that will look what, for instance, YouTube, Facebook, and all of these things. You imagine. Let's honor Bishop John Francis. Blessings to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Such an honor. God bless you, sir. Are we learning now? So, just introducing YouTube or Facebook to your life and your experience, if properly used, can multiply your efficiency. 
There are business today, businesses that have scaled to the billions because one application came as a system of advantage. How many other spiritual realities are locked up in the realm of the spirit that are left for our efficiency? Your life without them will misrepresent God. Men will give God names they were not supposed to give because your life is bankrupt. Come up here, a call to gain mastery, a call to gain accuracy in spiritual things. That the many things you have said God cannot do, that conclusion came from your personal frustration. There was a lens, a wrong vista with which you learned God from. And you have concluded there are, that there are certain things God cannot do. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for instance, Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 and 2, that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and to observe all that I command you this day. Watch this. It says that the Lord shall exalt you above all the nations of the earth. Is that in your Bible? And it says all these blessings. How many? All these blessings shall come upon you and shall overtake you. Do you know that was a promise to Abraham and by covenant to all of us? I wish I had the time to teach you on so many facets of the kingdom. One of it that has disturbed many believers is this mystery called the power to get wealth. It has nothing to do with money. You don't have the power to get wealth no matter how intelligent you are. You will be surprised that you will be at the edge of good things but not have the power to receive it. The power to get wealth is beyond creativity. If God does not grant you access to that ability, nothing will truly come to fruition in your life. It is the power for advancement, not finances. Finances is only a child of that advancement. Are we together? Let me play with your mind for one minute. How do you think you got here this night? Have you thought about it? What made you leave where you were and came here? Me? Look at me. This is all of me. You really believe this is what brought you? Doesn't that sound like an insult to your intelligence? <laughs> you think I brought you? No. Men don't have that power. There is a grace that came upon the ark of Noah. And that grace called the animals one by one. Listen carefully. There is an anointing that comes in honor to revelation and produces certain mysterious yet predictable outcomes in the spirit. It is the same way financial resources come. It is the same way God multiplies your influence. It looks like a, like a, a manifestation of coincidences, but it is highly predictable when you understand that there are laws in the spirit that control those outcomes. Are we together? People don't just get healed because you said in Jesus' name. It's not a charm. There is an understanding, a consciousness you must have that gives life to that performance. Otherwise, you'll just be playing church and nobody gets healed. You want to speak over people, oh, in Jesus' name, may God open doors and they shout amen. It's not just by uttering words. If it were so, there are unbelievers that pray every morning, chanting words loud to your ears, yet nothing changed. What is the difference between Elijah's prophesying, Elijah's prophesying, and your own? Because sometimes you repeated what they said. And what happened when they said it did not happen when you said it. So it is not the recitation. It is the light. Is someone learning tonight? My assignment is to challenge you as we pray. How many other virgin dimensions in the spirit? Your life is bankrupt of those experiences. And you find out that you can live a defeated life as a Christian. You are quoting scriptures, sincerely so. And yet your life cannot answer, it cannot speak. 
There are, some of you here are ministers of the gospel. Let me tell you, there is no land that is hard. It's a lie. It's the light you have and the grace that supports that light, that commands whatever results. You believe me when I tell you this. In my little life, I've proven certain things. I'm not a noisemaker. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He does not anoint your cup. Your cup is a report card. It tells what is on your head. If your cup is empty, the cup meaning the business, the cup meaning the ministry, don't blame the physical things. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup run it over. Lion of Judah, the lamb upon the throne, we hail you most high. The lion of Judah, the lamb upon the throne, we hail you most high. Listen, the realm of the spirit is like a school. How you are taught is what will reflect what you become. Imagine a student who finds himself in Cambridge or Oxford and chooses to freelance lectures. Today he's in the anatomy class. Tomorrow he decides to go to a physiology class. The student is learning, but the learning is not accurate. He will not become anything defined. This is how many believers are learning God. This is how many believers are learning the way of the Spirit. So they freelance into prayer and learn a bit. They freelance into fasting. They freelance into the subject of demons and accumulate this disjointed knowledge like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel. And yet they want an exceeding great army. No, the first thing that happened was order. Bones came to bones. There is something you need to know about prayer that makes the study of the word accurate. There is something you need to know about giving. There is something you need to know about power. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. Listen, when you give, when you give a young student admission, any, any of your institutions here, he comes in and he's given direction on how he will learn. A student does not decide how he learns. It is a foolish approach from any student. Are we together now? A student does not come and is, even if you are learning online, there is a curriculum. The Bible says to ask for the ancient part. And when you find it, walk therein. Let me tell you the truth. Many believers are becoming frustrated because their Christian experience is not adding up. There are many questions church is failing to answer. And this is a generation that is vocal. The generation of our parents and grandparents were a generation of loyalty. They followed quietly whether they understood or not. This is the generation that will ask what and why. No, don't tell me to fast for 21 days. Give me evidence. Spiritual evidence that there is power in fasting. Don't tell me to give and empty my account. No. You are the one who that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Listen, I'm speaking to something that has been locked up within your spirit. This is what I'm doing tonight. It's a clarion call to a preacher. It's a clarion call to a worshiper. There is more. This, these gaps in your spiritual experience, I tell you, in the days to come, many believers will be frustrated. There are many preachers who are confused. 
They don't know how to tap into the reservoir of light and knowledge. And so after six months of doing ministry, you are tired. You've preached everything you know to preach. Because you see, getting sermons is not the issue of theological understanding alone. There is a fountain in the spirit that when you break that open, it is in your light that we see light. Otherwise, as a preacher, you will be tired one day. You will stand in front of your congregation and literally cry and say, listen, I've taught everything. I read about faith. I preached it last week. I, I thought I would bring joy. I found out I, I spoke about joy last year. And your members know when you are exhausted. They love you, but they love their destinies too. They will live in pursuit for authenticity. 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 Evangelism is so hard because we do not have the tools to make it easy. Let me say that again. Evangelism is so hard because we do not have the tools to make it easy. If you think the global harvest will happen just by meeting people one by one, even after a thousand years, you will not get the job done. Because like I told us for the workers during our retreat last year, we have about 8 billion people and counting on earth. And statistically speaking, there are only about 2.6 billion professing Christians. That includes backsliders. When are we going to cover that gap? No, no, no. You, you get what I'm saying? If you truly love Jesus and you are responding to his heart, then you must pay attention to what I'm saying. We believe prayer is powerful. But there are many things that have refused to change in our lives. I'm submitting to you. It's not the limitation of God. It's a reflection of something. A bankruptcy in knowledge. The absence of completion. There are many things today. I look at my life and sometimes I look at my former self. And I get happy but get angry too. There were many things that I thought I knew and understood. I would have said at that point that I'd gotten mastery of it. Looking at me today, and from hindsight, I'm amazed at the level of gaps and spiritual ignorance and the mercy of God that even scaled me through. There are many apologies in the body of Christ bragging over knowing only. There are many business apologies bragging over knowing only. I have the principles of finances. Where is the evidence? Because the Bible says that which makes manifest is light. That is the Bible's definition of light. Whatever can drive away darkness, if it has that dominion enough to drive away darkness, then it qualifies to be called light. John 1, 9. That was the true light that lighted every man. That means there are false lights. They propose liberty, but they do not have the power to drive darkness. It's time for you to get back to the foundation of your spiritual understanding. And if need be, to begin to deconstruct certain things. What do I believe about prayer? What do I believe about God? Why are things not working in my life? I prayed for 30 people and just one person got healed. Glory be to God. But that scorecard, even from a human standpoint, will not earn you honor in the world of men. No. God is looking for a spectacular manifestation. Is it in your Bible that we're a chosen generation? He calls us a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Call forth, I preached a message two weeks ago in Koinonia called Doxazo, an unveiling of the glory of the king. That there is an excellency that must emanate from the life of the saints. It will not happen by luck, not by wishes. I have good news for you. This is the generation. I submit to you by the authority of scripture. Every generation will not fail God. His mercy has been searching for a generation. And we have the honor and the privilege to have been found. We can rise and we will rise by the spirit to superior levels of mastery. You can lay hold of eternal life. You can prove the reality of the God life. He said, great is the mystery of godliness that God can become a man. The word can become flesh. Victory can have a body. 
Did you hear what I said? Favor can have a body. Speed can have a body. Now, we are all students in the school of the spirit. Apostolic conferences like this is not a tell them conference. It's a conference where God is speaking to everyone, including the preacher. It's a school. It's a planting of hunger within our hearts. Hallelujah. I was telling those who came in the morning about a very saddening statistics that I read about the decline of Christianity in Europe and even in the United Kingdom here. Now, honor to all the servants of God who are here serving in the gospel. Hallelujah. But then I just looked at it and it, it was very disturbing. What is the meaning of this? Why the decline? It is said that there is a particular age range by that statistics that have willfully made up their minds that they are not interested in God again. I'm not talking of backsliders. As a revelation, they have studied God and other options and they have made up their mind as a generation that God will not be part of our lives again. We have interpreted him as a nuisance. Because many things we have said God gives them, apps have given them. Apps were more loyal and predictable than the God we proposed. And they are saying something is wrong. Something is wrong. Hallelujah. I'm pained when I see believers short of God's expectations in ministry, in business, in life. And I made up my mind as a man of God. I cannot do everything. But I said I must make the most of the opportunity that God has given me to help believers come into a greater level of accuracy. That our results in the kingdom can be predictable. Victory can be predictable. Liberty for yourself and the administration of the same for others can be predictable. Look the testimony of our dear sister. The lady who cried giving her testimony. All her family, demonic patterns. And here comes, a, how many believers did that lady pass through? Imagine if she had to interpret God from the lens of the Christians that came her way. She would conclude that God were not mighty. But thank God that God still has witnesses. Men who can bring a, an end, an end to the works of darkness. Your Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, not discuss, destroy, destroy. That God will restore us to times when if you lay hands on a man, that man knows he truly carried something. That he will walk away knowing that I just left with something I did not come with. Men who are like gods upon the earth. And you don't have to be a preacher. There is a transition happening in the spirit. God is turning believers to witnesses. This is a transition that is happening. It's wonderful to be a believer. But when it's time for you to display the glory of God, you will need to be beyond a believer. You will need to be a witness. The mandate is for witnesses. And a witness is a validator of a claim. Are we together? The assignment of a witness is to bring an end to arguments. And every witness is strong based on the token of truthfulness that he carries. It's called evidence. Evidence. Prove to me God lifts. Prove to me he honors. Prove to me he can dry tears and take away shame. Oh, taste and see. There is an experience to the spirit walk. We can taste and we can see. Please look at me. How many of you have tasted Coca-Cola? Come on, Coca-Cola. Even if you don't take it again. <laughs> How many of you have tasted orange? Banana? Watermelon? Do you know the difference? Your mind has taught the taste. To the point where if you taste a spoiled orange, your mind will reject that taste. Because it will not say, this is not how authentic orange should be. There is a way you can taste God. That every other thing that is counterfeit, the same way you can take orange, huh? watermelon, and 
without being a scientist and without the advantage of school, you can know and sometimes it can look fine. Yet, the separation comes in the taste. The reason why we swallow everything is because we do not even know how the real should taste. We don't know the difference between deception and authenticity because in our world, there's something, our taste buds have been extracted out through religion. We've lost the ability to taste the goodness of God. So we don't know what the favor of God looks like. We don't know what it looks like when God helps a man. We just say, God help me. We don't even know what we are asking. There is no personification to our desires. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible tells us that the apostles, the disciples now, they were praying for the release of Peter. And when the angel honored their prayer and brought Peter out, Peter came and stood in front of the door and knocked. The young damsel opened the door, saw him and closed it back and they kept praying because they did not know how their answer should be. Listen to me. Don't just laugh, be provoked within your spirit. Hallelujah. We do not know the difference between fake power and authentic power. Because when you have tasted of eternal life in its authenticity, you will know with surgical precision that this is not of God. It does not carry the character of God. Listen. If God is calling you here into the five-fold ministry, I want you to listen to me. We are going to pray. You won't believe that I did not even touch my notes again. I just left the thing because this is what it means to be yielded. I have my notes, but this is what God is doing. Hallelujah. He said, whom shall we send and who shall go for us? Whom shall we send? And who shall go for us? The prophet said, here am I, send me. Do you know the meaning of that? Send me means teach me. Send me means train me. Send me means give me the blueprint. I'm tired of confusion. You see, when God calls us, he calls us to himself. Then he sends us to the nations. He does not call men to an eat. He calls men to himself. If God calls you and the first thing you had was a commission, you had a familiar spirit. God calls men to himself because there is an experience you must get from him that becomes the basis of your fulfilling your mandate. Colossians 4.17 says, Say unto Archippus, Take heed to the ministry that thou receivest in the Lord, not from the Lord. To receive something from me means relationship is not needed. Just pass it. But it means you have to enter the system. Go and get the food in the kitchen. You have to enter the kitchen to pick it there. Are we together? My precious people, please hear me. This is beyond a church move. This is beyond another apostolic or prophetic move. This is beyond the ambition of man to do something in the name of the Lord. No. God is trusting us with a grace, a mantle, a mandate, a call, an assignment uniquely defined to be a revelation of the possibilities that can be captured from this spirit life that you become an embodiment a testament a personification of all that God can do through men to what end Galatians 1 24 and they glorified God in me through your healing ministry through your command of favor and wealth and prosperity that it will be done in such a way and a manner that is beyond the realm of argument, it becomes clear that this one is the finger of God. While he was introducing Minister Sinaj, I was listening to some of the things he was saying, and in my mind I was thinking, because this is how my mind thinks. I'm thinking, my God, look at this. 
This is what it means, a revelation of the God life. Now, many people will think it does not matter, but there are certain results that God leaves there because they are signatures of his grace. They are signatures of his hand. Are we together now? I said that in the morning and, you know, just humorously say, when I was invited to go and deliver two lectures in Harvard, I'm not a lecturer. I don't have a PhD. This is not a church. What did they see? What did they hear? I will tell you. That is what God wants to bring out of you. Because he says, Gentiles shall come to your light and kings. When I read it in my Bible, I believed it. That you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth. That God gives to you the key of David. The mystery that opens the gates of nations. And you open doors that no man can shut doesn't matter the sentiment. This is not bragging. It is true. You can get to a realm where if you are not favored in 24 hours, you will go for a retreat because of the level of mastery you have held. And it does not matter what city or what nation and you don't have to be a preacher. Jesus was not a preacher when the Magi came to him. They came to a baby. Knowing he was a baby, they still came with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Hmm. There are many churches that are trusting God for support. Thank God for donation, but I submit to you under God, it will not happen that way. There is a mystery. The economic system of the kingdom is deeply mysterious. It is only the outer part that is known scientifically and economically. The root of the believer's wealth is a mystery, just like the foundations of the earth. Geography tells us that the earth is revolving. The Bible tells us that the earth has cornerstones. The earth has a foundation that is invisible to the eyes. That is the same way you can lay hold of certain things. So the outer you is the one that is known, but there is a deep root in the spirit. That is the wow factor, the mystery behind your results. So you, people weigh you and you don't add up, and they are right. Because what empowers you is not visible. Why the favor? Why the increase? Why the consistent results? Then you will tell them, an ordinary man cannot do this. This is what God can do. Amen. I'm saying this because we need to get tired tonight as we pray. I don't just want us to waste our time praying. In fact, I will not even look to the notes again. We'll just pray. Are we together? There is a hunger. I told us in the morning, hunger is proof of health. When you are sick, the first thing you lose is your appetite. Doctors can use appetite to diagnose that you are truly sick. I came to plant a hunger in you. There are many good things that have happened in your life. But come up here, it's a prophetic call. It's a clarion call. God cannot be glorified to the degree he wants through this version of you. As a preacher, through this version of you. As a man of God, through this version of you. There is a version that he wants you to mold into. Like a snake molds into a higher version of itself leaving its former self behind. This one thing I do. You have prophesied before, but there is a realm of accuracy God wants to bring you into. That you become like Samuel, a man whose words does not fall to the ground. When you say, thus saith the Lord, nations, including critics, say, listen, we have learned that the word of God is upon his mouth. Samuel, a man who was like God, when Saul met Samuel, he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you not to be a king, to be a captain over his inheritance. That is a mysterious trust in the Bible. You know what it means to be a captain over God's inheritance? Everything he owns plus the resources. Hallelujah. That something happens when people say pray for me. They are not just saying pray for me as a way of managing pain. They know. That there is something you have mastered. You have touched something in the spirit. When you call upon the name of the Lord on behalf of men. You shift climates in a moment. Literally. You see. So it doesn't just become a credential of mockery that you are a prayer warrior. 
Just meaning that you know how to shout. But you have brought potency. You have become a revelation of the power of prayer to a people. That when someone hears you say in Jesus name, they say amen because they know your in Jesus name comes with light. Light that backs it. Hallelujah. When you carry that grace, you ask people to give. Let me tell you, the person who is coming to give, number one, is giving because he loves the Lord. But they have learned that there is something about the soil of your heart. That you have done business with God and transited from 30-fold, 60-fold. You have, you have made your soil so rich that anything that drops there, Are we letting believers? The streets in London are waiting for witnesses. Men and women, not church goers, not just tongue talkers, but men who become validators of the power and the grace of God. You step into an office and you scale their results. And when they are, they, the statistics don't add up. And like Laban, they will consult by whatever means and say, what is responsible for this result? And they will say, there is such and such a man. Daniel single-handedly, among the many other presidents, was responsible for the growth and the excelling in Babylon. The king could not deny it. He called it the spirit of the gods, but he was right. How about Joseph? The king said, can we find such a man so discreet and wise? And in a moment, he became a prime minister. Promotion is not difficult. It depends on the light you command. Listen to me, let me tell you the truth. The world is so dark when men see authentic light, they don't deny it. Did you hear what I said? Gentiles shall come to your light, kings to the brightness of your rising. I made up my mind that within the gift of the lifetime God has given me, I will first for myself rise and ascend to heights, even virgin dimensions, and then help lead a generation as my contribution, that we will touch God with a level of authenticity that we can bring to men. Not just talking, not an assumed God who cannot be proven. No. There is a lot of noise in church. A lot of it. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm part of the body, but there is a lot of noise. God can do this, he will do this. And the people who need God to show up that way are watching. Let me tell you, members are not stupid. One day, one after the other, people will begin to search for alternatives because the darkness that is upon the world is great. So if God is calling you to get into ministry, I beseech you, before you start running around looking for billboards and the rest, go back and say, God, place something upon my life. Give me an experience, not from a competitive standpoint. I need to serve my generation with authenticity. I need to bring God to my world in a way that all and sundry, believers and unbelievers, and it doesn't have to be by preaching. It doesn't have to be by preaching. A businessman from Oxford, but a unique dimension of God's power rests upon you and you begin to command such strange results that people look at you you see let me tell you the truth even if men don't believe you once you are consistent they respect you that is the reason why we respect terrorists if we don't believe them we don't believe in their vision but their consistency stops them from being ignored if they say we are coming For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Let me just give you five things quickly that God is doing in this season. we we'll have to end here. God will grant us grace. Sound of revival is coming. The Lord granted me a 
revelation about his emphasis within these last days. And please listen to me. We're about to pray. There are three levels of the anointing as revealed in scripture. Number one, there is the anointing that comes within a believer on account of your being grafted into Christ. The moment that oneness happens by the Spirit, there is a measure of His engracing upon you. It's called the anointing within. Number two, there is the anointing that comes upon the believer by reason of finding your place in God's prophetic program. You call it your purpose, you call it your assignment. The moment you find your place in God's program, there is a measure of grace that comes in honor to that discovery to help you serve his purposes as committed to you. But number three, there is the anointing that comes upon a believer and that anointing is looking for many people today. Not just on account of your being a believer, nor the office that you occupy, on account of the sacrifice of alignment, understanding God's emphasis per season. When you are able to touch the heart of God and discern what God is doing in the now, there is what God was doing yesterday. There is what God is doing now. God is a God of times and seasons. And the Bible says he made the lights and the stars to govern seasons. There is a particular light when you see, you can know. You can use the sun, the moon, and the stars to know day and night. That is how it is in the spirit. There are many people who love Jesus. They are saved genuinely. They have found their place in life. But they have not been able to find to understand God's current dealings. And you see, if you, if you don't get what I'm telling you now, you will be surprised that the move of the Spirit that is already happening around the world, you will be so left out in it. And yet for you, it will not be backsliding. It's just that the engracing that keeps you relevant in that move was not received. Are we together? So, when you are able to find what God is doing and you align to it, then you see you are able to access certain levels of graces, unctions by the Spirit and you will serve His purposes at a greater level. It will not just be because you are better than those who could not get it. It is a product of your alignment. The Bible says, and of the tribe of Issachar, is that in your Bible? There were many tribes, but of the tribe of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. As a result, they became captain over many. And the people were at their command. Not everybody will spearhead the move and the program of God. It doesn't matter whether you want to or not. It's not just about wanting to. There is a standard you must meet in terms of your hunger, your alignment, and your understanding. And to wrap up this conference, I want to reveal to you very quickly in the next five minutes, five things that represent the emphasis of God in these last days. You want to plunge into God's prophetic program? This is it, number one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please hold four people who will start running now under the anointing. Four people. I just saw light. And it's not just some careless Pentecostal thing. It is God is bringing speed to their lives and their destinies. So four of them, literally, the power of God comes upon them and they start running. Just hold them so they don't injure themselves. That's what I want you to do, ushers. Are you ready to receive? So there are five things that God is doing in this prophetic season. And while we have that, have you submitted your prayer requests? Okay, so I want you to do this without distraction. Please look at me. We'll do this now. We're stepping into a prophetic in the next maybe two, three minutes. We'll do that very fast. And um, I'm glad Mr. Sinach is here. I feel stirred in my spirit that somewhere in the course of speaking over you, I will ask her to come 
particularly for those called into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry. I, I'm trusting that there will be a grace that will be deposited on people because there are people who are writing songs that are not blessing the body of Christ at all. And the reason is because it's just an ambition to move a career. This thing comes from heaven. There is a grace that comes upon you. It says, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. You see, there will be an impartation shortly. So here's what I want you to do. So that there's no distraction, please pass your prayer request to the last person by your left and right, extreme last. Just pass it quietly and the ushers will pick it from there. And for those of you who are following, whether by television or following by way of internet, you can do the same. Just send in your requests. We're about to pray. Are you ready to write? Please make sure you write. Believe. This is not just a blind ritual. We're people of understanding. What gives power to spiritual activities is not the spirituality of the activities, but the revelation and the consciousness that supports those activities. There is a God that answers prayer. It's true. Oh, oh, oh. As the days draw by, I keep seeing the manifestation of many of the visions that God showed me. As at the time he showed me some of these visions, some of them 10, 20 years ago, it didn't look like it would ever happen. But I watched with wonder the accuracy. I watched the dominion power of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, never downplay the possibilities that the Holy Spirit can produce. He gives life to the word. He makes it happen. If God says he's raising a people, you get out of the way and allow the Holy Spirit do his thing. He may look deceptfully weak, but there is tremendous power. The Spirit of God is literally the custodian of the power of the Godhead. It is the reason why we know we will not fail. Because of his presence. He's the one who is the Lord of hosts. He leads this army himself. Krate baratos kavrendi baratos kadila tabar sadash krata badagata baranta shavres kebelege baratos stoi berianda shalagros kaveria tabaronda skia pradu salia davrandi gabarus kiata follow the light follow the light that's what the spirit of god is saying follow the light leads to grace follow the light shani basabaratu siata follow the light and adush kalibra gata subratiasa that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light that lighted every man that was the true light that lighted every man I know the lion, I know the lamb, I know the lion, I know the lamb, I believe in the lion, I believe in the lamb, I believe in the lion, ah, I believe in the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. He says, I wept for no man was worthy 
to open the book and unlock the scrolls and the elder tapped me and he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of Jesse is worthy he says and I looked and saw upon the throne a lamb as though had been slain having seven eyes and seven horns seven eyes and seven horns seven eyes and seven horns revelation precedes authority revelation precedes authority you don't just command authority light elevates you to a realm where you gain command of authentic power and authority in the world of men Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Please gather the requests. So there are things that God is doing across the earth. Hmm. The waters has been stirred in this place now. The waters has been stirred. The waters has been stirred. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice! Rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. He has come to you, his Israel. The prophetic ministry, the prophetic ministry, the prophetic ministry, stare that water, the prophetic ministry, the eyes that see and the ears that hear, the prophetic ministry, I call that depth in the spirit, let the fountains be open. Let the fountains be open. Watch us, prophetic intercessors. Paru sete bakas kadia, embreketa parus kadiata, grades kadusiata. I stir up that well, stir up that well. The eyes that see, the ears that hear. Ali Barako Sobrenge Beretusia. Oh, holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Oh, holy, bring them out. Let me have them here. Blessed is he who comes. In the name of our God, oh, holy, holy, blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes. Hello, him, Madonna. Hello, him, Madonna. Hello, him. Hello, him, Madonna. Hello, 
Are you praying in the spirit? More. I enlarge. Please be careful. Don't, don't keep them near Bishop. Please. Protocol. Can you walk to move them forward? Please. Someone just protect the ministers. I apparatus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hear me. The Lord is saying, I am restoring visions and dreams. There are many of you who have lost this faculty in the spirit. God used your dreams to show you things. But I'm seeing oil, oil coming on people. A restoration, a restoration. That ability in the spirit. A restoration, a restoration. After the order of Joseph, dream destiny dreams. See your future in dreams and prophetic encounters. Ani Shabaronda Sevalescu Bash Rata Balako Sabrinstevich Hallelujah Please listen to me The Lord is showing me a vision I'm seeing a pot that was broken But I'm seeing a hand mending it back And the Lord is saying I'm restoring There are people you have lost things You've lost relationships You've lost opportunities the porter is greater than the clay because he has the power to remold. Is someone hearing? I speak restoration. You will marvel and wonder the testimonies that come out of this. For some of you, it's restoration of years. You lost opportunities. My God is restoring, 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 restoring family, restoring marriages. Restoring relationships by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is saying, I should tell someone, you are still a vessel that I will use. I don't know what this means. The Lord is saying, I should tell someone, you are still a vessel that I will use. Oh, even if you have been like Samson, that your eyes have been plucked and your hair has been cut, even now, even now, even now, the same way the shepherd will come and fight for one ear and two legs. God is saying even now, you, he's, he's telling me to tell someone, you are still a vessel that he will use. I may not know what has happened around your life, but you are still a vessel. That prophetic word over you has not changed. You can start afresh in the spirit again. You can start afresh in the spirit again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. You cannot be a witness if you don't have a genuine encounter with God. You can play church. You can play sermons. You can play religion. But I tell you sincerely, you cannot deny the potency of a genuine encounter. You can argue it you can live in denial, but the truth remains the truth. I'm praying for you. The grace that makes for encounters, that draw men beyond the outer court, beyond the inner court, that leads you to virgin chambers in the spirit, where you will see and where you will hear, where you will know God for who he is, deriving confidence 
audacity from those encounters. May that grace rest upon you. The Bible says, blessed is the man who God causes to approach him. I pray for you, let that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please look up. Please look up. Be sensitive. You are receiving something here. Do you know what the Bible calls the power to prosper? The power to prosper is not an anointing that makes you rich. No. That is an ignorant person's definition of it. It has nothing to do with money. The power to prosper is the grace that sponsors advancement. Listen please. Listen please. You do not have the power to prosper. You will never make constructive progress. You will only keep recycling seasons. Are we together? The power to prosper is an ability, it's an engracing that comes from God to men. That grace comes to honor something God told Abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That for that mission and that prophetic word to come to pass, there is an engracing from the spirit that men need to receive. It's called the power to prosper. Here's how it functions. Please listen. The first assignment of the power to prosper is to alter your perception and your understanding. Are we together now? That power causes you to begin to see things in a certain way. It reconstructs your mindset. It reconstructs your consciousness, your perception. It engraces you to perceive things in a supernatural way bringing you enlightenment and understanding at an unusual rate. Number two, the power to prosper rests upon the works of your hands. It brings extraordinary productivity that you are able to produce results beyond the natural course of things, beyond your training, beyond your secular training. Then the power to prosper comes upon your feet giving you direction and guidance. Listen carefully. There is a difference between direction and guidance. Direction is focused on revealing the destination. Guidance is focused on showing you how to get there. If the only thing you have is direction, you will still be as confused as someone who does not know. If I am directing you, my focus is the destination. Are we together now? Yes. But when you receive guidance, it shows you the steps. So if I'm to direct you out of this room, I can point a door there and say, follow it. You will be surprised that you will not be aware that there are staircases. Are we together now? And that the topography is not the same. That's the assignment of guidance. To let you know when you step up, let you know when you step down so that you can get there. The power to prosper can direct you to the right relationships. For some of you, that's the grace that brought you here. You see, it directs you so that you meet the right people, the right connections, the right relationships. Those who carry this mysterious ability, it looks like they are holding some charm or something because they always meet the right people. It edits wicked people from your life and insists that everyone you meet becomes a destiny helper. It's called the power to prosper. For some of you, you have been in UK. Now, please don't feel offended. And that includes those watching. You've been in UK for years. What you lack is that divine direction that this grace brings. You've met all kinds of wrong people who have taken advantage of you. The issue is not hoping things will change. It will not change until the right grace upon you rests. I know this. This is how business people get correct partners and help us. It's not by guessing. If you choose men based on your eyes, you will choose Judas because he can kiss. But you will not know that the kiss of Judas is not a sign of intimacy. It's a signal to the enemy that this is the one to die. If I were to choose any disciple based on the outworking of their behavior, Judas would be my first port of call. A man who holds money and can kiss. 
That's a good man to be part of. Because at least it's a sign of love. So I assume that if I'm in trouble, he will comfort me. Except that sometimes a kiss can be a sign to the enemy. This is the one to die. Even Samuel, as accurate as he was, when it had to do with ordaining the next king, he was about to miss it. He carried the vial and was about, he said, he saw Eliab and said, surely, not with this build. God cannot waste this kind of macho man. And God says, stop. That's not how I choose men. The wilderness, there is a boy smelling but cold. With no decorum, no sense of order, but he's still the chosen. And he said, wait. And Samuel said, we'll not sit until that boy comes here. I know what that grace has done in my life. I know what it can do in the lives of men. You will never be able to select the right people using brain work. You will make too many mistakes. And all it takes to destroy you is one mistake. But that grace will put together supposed weak men. And yet you will see the result that comes out from that. I always wondered why Jesus chose the kind of disciples he chose. He did not choose it with any man assisting him. So you would not say somebody tampered with his intelligence. Jesus prayed all night. And looked the kind of weak doubters and all these people. But did the job get done? Yes. The job was done. Because if you had chosen wise people. They would be too wise to be meek. Too wise to be obedient. Too wise to be repentant. Too wise to be malleable. It's called the way of the spirit. Just like you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in her that is with child. The way of God is strangely mysterious. I'm saying this because I want to speak over your life. Bring the prayer request, please. You've tabernacled in this place from morning even up till now. The call, come up hither. It's not just a clarion call to see more. It challenges you, but it also brings you into virgin experiences. Experiences that hitherto have not yet been captured in your spirit work. Please listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It is true that graces are transferable. It is true that our results in this kingdom depend on the kind and the quality of grace that is upon your life. There are many preachers who are tired of their realms, their dimensions. There are many business people. Many of you have not tasted of the help and the favor of God. That name Ebenezer is a strange name in your work with God because you have not seen any reality that relates to that. I'm going to spend the next one, two minutes speaking over your life and then we pray over this request. We're wrapping up. But by all means, let your heart be open. If you are yet to submit your request, please, don't spare. Send it. Let the God of wonders do something in your life. You don't have to bring them out under the anointing again. I just want to pray for these ones. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. In the name of Jesus, the grace to stay, the grace to remain until you become. May that grace rest on you. The grace to fast. The kind of consecration that will bring you to the place of authentic power. Let that grace rest on you. May you be as discerning as the men of Issachar. Having the ability to see and interpret the writings on the wall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please listen. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. I'm about to pray a serious prayer now. Please make sure someone is holding them so that we don't have any casualties. Let me have your attention. You've heard me say it and I always do this in honor to an instruction that he gave. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me and the light that came from him gushed into my being, in a letter encounter he would give me an instruction. He said, to every nation that I send you, to every person, every people group, 
there will always be someone there who will receive the light that came from me to you. There are dimensions in the spirit you don't learn. You know it's an endowment. It's a deposit of the spirit. And I want to pray that prayer for you. The light came by mercy. It came by grace. It's not an effort of any man. There is no bragging. Father, upon men and women, sons and daughters, across this European space, here at this beautiful auditorium tonight, find faithful witnesses. Find men and women who will drink of this light. I stretch my hands and I pray. Like the dew of Hammon, let it rest on you. Like the dew of Hammon, let it rest on your ministry. Let it rest on your business. The light that brings undeniable results. The light that compels. The light that announces. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Let it rest on you. Let it rest on you. Command signs and wonders in ministry. Command signs and wonders in business. Let that light attract helpers, attract blessers. You will never be without help. You will never be without witnesses. You will never be left alone. Not in any kingdom project. This light will call men by the Spirit. Call nations by the Spirit. Call kings by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, this light will bring resources to you. Mysteriously so. Bring resources to you in business. Bring resources to you in ministry. You will never be without help. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand in partnership with all the graces here represented. In the name of Jesus, I speak to those doors. Ephata, be open. Ephata, a sound in the spirit. Be open, Tita and Hita. In the name of Jesus. Please hear me. Everyone here who is owing financially, mortgage issues, bills, you are in debt, just believe me, take your mind away from, don't worry, you just believe God. Please, in the name that is above all names, I've been in debt before. I know what it means. The Bible says to comfort others with the same comforts that you have received. I pray for you. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, in the name that is above all names, I program a climate of favor over you. By the spirit of grace, I program a climate of favor, a mysterious climate of favor over your destiny. May resources rush to you. Come out of debt now. Come out of financial shame now. Come out of reproach now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything dead or dying. Dead or dying. Organs in your body as a result of some infirmity. Your business dying. Your enterprise dying. Your spiritual life dying. I want to speak to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tali Takumi, come back to life. Everything dead, everything dying, hear the word of the Lord. Come back to life now. Dead body parts, dead organs, come back to life now. Dead businesses, career pursuits, come back to life now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards these requests. And I want you to just make faith declarations. Please stretch your hands by faith. Hallelujah. Here's what will happen. Since 
um, we are praying over this. Is, is everybody, do we have all the requests here? Please stretch your hands. I'll bow my knees and pray. You don't have to kneel. You just stretch your hand by faith and believe. And those of you who are online, you can stretch by faith and follow. When a serious business of delivery, bringing things from the realm of the spirit, giving frame and form to them, making them manifest by the spirit of grace. Go ahead and pray in one minute. You are praying in the spirit. You are making declarations. Sani baron sandi la caporas cavres shadi barado zivesh in the name of Jesus Alina shabras cavrina shala grosse bredish transform families transform families transform families transform families by the power of the Holy Spirit, transform families. Transform families. Let doors be open. Yokes broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. Destiny is rewritten by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Impossible situations addressed by the mercy of God. Father, release miracles. Let your people testify. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Since we have Bishop in our presence, please let me respectfully request that you just come and speak over this request. Let's honor him as he comes, please. Let's honor him as he comes. Keep clapping. Truly the presence of God is in this place. Angels are positioned in this building getting ready to release your word. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you because you are God. There is none like unto you. None can compare with you. When you speak, Lord, it comes to pass. We thank you because light and illumination and a revelation has been released in this house. And so, Father, now we speak over these requests. We ask right now by your power that there will be an acceleration of miracles and signs and wonders. We thank you, God, because you said if we ask anything in your name, you promise to do it. Now, God, as we agree in this building with Apostle and myself and all the other leaders in this house, we speak right now in the name of Jesus, an acceleration of miracles, signs and wonders. Doors that were closed, we demand them open now. We command in the name of Jesus that there will be an acceleration. Oh God, even by the time we leave this building, things that we didn't believe were gonna happen, we manifest miracles. Now in the name of oh, Amansato. We thank you, 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 we thank you. On Amandusha, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Somebody just start thanking him, it's gonna happen. Thank you, we 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 thank you. Let your thank you get louder, thank you. Let your thank you become louder. Thank you. It's about to happen as your speaking angels are releasing. We thank you. Thank you for your miracle. Thank you for the house. Thank you for the car. Thank you for the dimension of miracles you've been waiting on. Thank you. And it is done in Jesus' name. Clap your hands, Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please listen. We're getting ready to wrap up. My apologies, I couldn't give you the five prophetic things that God is doing in this season just to honor what God has decided to do tonight. But there are three instructions I want to leave you with as we wrap up this conference. Number one, as an act of your will, design a systemic prayer life. A systemic prayer life. Not just a prayer life. A systemic prayer life. Please listen. A systemic prayer life. There is nothing in the Bible called the gift of prayer. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication. But there is a labor in word and in prayer. The apostolic model that was given to the church according to Acts 2.42. The Bible says, and they continued steadfastly in prayer, in fellowship, in breaking of bread. You see that? Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You want to rise and ascend realms in the spirit, you must create a systemic prayer life. Number two, you must be intentional about your press for light. Illumination, authentic, provable illumination that comes by the word. That means you must obtain grace to grow in the word. It is a responsibility that you, you need to impose upon yourself. Acts chapter 20, I believe, and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up. And to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Are we together? You need to damage ignorance. Fight ignorance. Make it a project. And there are three ways you engage the word of God. Number one, you study it in scripture. Number two, you listen to it. There is the hearing of faith. Number three, there is the confession of faith. Don't trivialize this. They are not elementary is how the system of the kingdom works. Don't change the formula. You study to show yourself approved. You listen to build faith through repetition that creates conviction. And you speak the word because there is a prophetic component to every believer. Number three, I'd like you to value his presence in the place of worship. Every anointing has a consecration requirement. It is not enough to receive. You must master the laws that protect the grace you are given. If you are Samson, the secret is on your hair. You need to understand how to protect the anointing. Are we together? Number four, make up your mind to find your place by the spirit of grace in God's prophetic blueprint. Thank God for your love and labor. But make sure you end living a purposeless life. You cannot just be escorting men around the corridors of destiny. He says, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will. Jeremiah 1, 5. Right from when you were in your mother's womb, before thou camest forth, I called you and ordained you to be a prophet even to the nations. You must find your place in God's prophetic blueprint. Are we together? Yeah. Now I'm going to give you the last instruction. You must do all you can taking advantage of the grace of God to walk in love. Now listen carefully. This looks very simple. But everything in the kingdom is powered by love. It means you have to protect your love life. Protect it from offense. Yes, like John the Baptist. Who could not protect. He could protect every other thing. Including the secrets given to him about Jesus. But he could not protect his love life. It was offense that made him become a prey. Till he died as a birthday gift. That's not how prophets die. No. But that's what offense can reduce a great man to become. Make up your mind that you will walk in love. 
Satan aborts the seeds that we receive by bringing offense, bringing pain. You go back home and there are thousand and one things to agitate you. Make up your mind. I will, as an act of my will, walk in love. You will look foolish walking in love, but remember that's what defeated death. Hmm. Where power failed, love went beyond it. Don't think love is feminine at all. That is the power that purchased redemption. Power is a child that comes out of love. Faith is a child that comes out of love. Signs and wonders are children that come out of love. By this shall all men know. Koinonia, listen. Koinonia, UK, listen. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, not when you pray in tongues, not if you pray in tongues, not if you sow seeds, not if you are an apostle or a prophet. No. You have love, not for God, one to another. You cannot call upon the name of the Lord and hate your brother and hate your sister. The Bible says you are a hypocrite. It's as clear and as simple as that. The height of transformation is not enlightenment, it's love. You know you are really transformed when you have the stamina to remain in love in spite of, regardless. Make up your mind to walk in love. For some of you, you need to go back home and mend bridges. I know you fell under the anointing. Don't waste the experience. It's not all about the charismatism. The love of Christ must dwell in you. The Bible says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the koinonia, sharing together of the spirit, the participation, it says to remain with you. This is my final charge. Your prayer life, you must not compromise on your prayer life. It takes discipline. Find a faithful friend who can help you. There are times you don't have to do it alone. Find somebody. Somebody has to love you enough. I told our family back in Nigeria that everybody cannot hate you. Even Satan is not hated by everybody. Somebody loves him. You cannot say everybody hates you. No. It's unusual to be hated by everybody because Satan is loved. There are terrorists today who have wives and children. Knowing they are terrorists, they're still married. Somebody was willing to say, I will spend the rest of my life with you knowing you will kill every day. So everybody cannot hate you. Now, leave those who don't like you and look for those who like you. You will find somebody who is genuine, true, sincere. Maybe not perfect, but sincere. Sincere enough to pray with you and let iron sharpen iron. Are we together? Can I add one more charge? Walk in humility. Walk in humility. Resist the temptation of pride. Resist it. It's a temptation. Fight it in the name of Jesus. You will return back and you will see extraordinary dimensions walking in you. Just when you want to brag and boast and behave like Lucifer, remember. Remember. The anointing was only designed to fight what is against God. But if it is God who is doing the fighting, the anointing cannot work. The anointing only fights what is anti-Christ. So when God is the one fighting you, no level of impartation will bring a revenge. Who fights him? He's the warrior himself. I have seen the damaging effect of pride. I learned this early in life and in ministry. Even when he does great things to us as individuals and as a family of faith, please listen. Make sure you do not get into the temptation of competing, competition. No, run away from that. It's a satanic, luciferian attitude. Yes, there is one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Are we learning now? These two things, if you forget anything I said, let's assume you were sleeping from morning till now. Yes. Let's assume you just woke up and you're asking, can you repeat one thing? I won't repeat everything I said, but I will repeat this. Love and humility. If this is all you carry, you had a great conference. Love and humility. Hallelujah.
Let me make the altar call. My final assignment. Sound of Revival comes in September. And this time around, we're going to Leeds First Direct Arena. And we trust God for grace. But let me make the altar call. Please minimize movements. Let's honor the Lord one last time. And then we're done. You are in this place and you're saying, Apostle, I need Jesus genuinely, truthfully. I came here to listen to a preacher, but I heard Jesus and I heard him calling me to deeper realms, deeper dimensions. At the gallery, following online, everywhere. I want to give you this one last chance. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. And I'm calling two sets in one. Those who have never made a genuine decision for Jesus. Or number two, those who are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life. I truly need to do this before I leave. Wherever you are, I'm going to count. Oh, Minister Sinach is here. I'm going to still plead. I thought she had gone, so I will still do what I asked. I said she would do. And um, I will take the altar call and then please... Let me give her a minute to just speak over those called into the worship ministry, prophetic psalmistry, just to speak over their lives. And um, I believe that graces can be transferred. But let's finish the altar call. You are coming, please come. You are coming, please run. One, two, come to Jesus. Please come, run to Jesus. Come. He wants to play. You receive Jesus first, then you can play. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Come. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. One more time. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Okay, so here's what we'll do very fast. Just clear the way for Sinach and let's just welcome her to speak a word and then I'll just lead you to Jesus. She's just going to speak over those called into the worship ministry. Let's honor her as she comes. Okay, you can use this. No, that's, all right. that's all right. Praise the Lord. How many of you feel that you have been called into this? Let me see your hand. So many of you. And when God puts a desire in your heart, it's a seed. It is a seed. But what happens with it depends all on you. You know, it reminds me of when the Bible talks about that the talent was given to three people, one, five, one, two, and one, one. What you do with God, what God has put in your hands, all depends on you. And sometimes it truly might not seem as if it is working or you're going to be all that. But your focus on God's word and your love for him. Because what we do is not all about entertainment. It is our love for the master. Our love for him that translates to our love for the people of God that would truly make our life a ministry to people. 
And so today, lift up your hands, please. I pray and I speak over you. That the visions that God has put in your heart, that your heart will be such a fertile ground that it will grow and germinate in the name of Jesus. And like the word of God says in the book of Psalm, you are like a tree that is planted by the riverside. That at any time, whether it be dry season or it be rainy season, you will always find fruits in you. And that people will come and they will eat from that fruit. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That you will not dream small. That you will dream big, knowing that you have a big God who owns the world. That you will not dream only for yourself, but you will dream for God. For God is big and the earth is his footstool. For he has given you the nations. And when you sing, we will not be singing for ourselves. We will be singing his word over the nations. For as we sing his word over the nation, illumination will come. Deliverance will come. Salvation will come. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Let's give her a big God bless you. Thank you. So for all of you who are here, please, may I request that you lift your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I've heard your word tonight. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior, my Lord, and my king. I declare that I'm a child of God, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I go from glory to glory, grace to grace, amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted, Father. Thank you for this once. I decree and declare the grace to live the victorious Christian life is released upon you. You go from glory to glory, grace to grace. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now please do me a favor, just in one minute, all of you, you would have the counselors waving the placard. Please let me request that you follow all of them in, one, in concert. They would have a word with you just for one moment and then you're back to your seats. Let's honor them as they go, everyone. Keep clapping. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone who traveled from all across the United Kingdom and even outside of the UK. Thank you for your sacrifice to have made this conference. Um, it was so designed by the Spirit of God to be a blessing, to extend the life of God to as many. And we thank God for everyone. Um, it, was, it was really limited. We had to limit the people. And so for all of you online, I hope that you understand there will be a greater, um, we'll have a bigger auditorium, bigger theater during the Sound of Revival. And we trust God that you'll be a great one in the name of Jesus. I want to thank all our special guests who have come, guests from the Jesus House, um, from the Ruach Church here. We thank God that um, the angel over this house is here himself. We honor you sincerely. Thank you so, so very much. Reverend Akila, thank you sincerely. And um, Prophet Toby. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Minister Sinach, what do we tell you? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Pete Rock, the Lord bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. 
And um, Pastor, my apologies, I did not introduce you. I didn't do justice to you, my sincere apologies. But we honor you and we honor your wife. And we honor everyone who has come with you in the name of Jesus. We always want to make sure we don't make mistakes so that we don't say what should not be said in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Awoni, I spot you. God bless you. The footballer, how are you? Blessings to you. May you keep scoring goals in Jesus' name. Not in any club side. Just score goals wherever you are. That's the most important thing. Hallelujah. And let me honor my uncle and my auntie one last time. God bless you. God bless you. They are here seated in front. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presence. Now, very quickly, for workers, we have our session tomorrow morning. Do not forget, we're here in the morning for the workers only session, please. It's just for workers. Um, so, all who are not workers, you are part of us, but um, in the name of Jesus, we are done with you. God is faithful. God will continue what he has started in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so, workers, we're here. Let's, let's be here at 8.30 so that um, we'll just do what we need to do and to be done. And um, by tomorrow evening, we'll be headed for Leicester preaching for a dear friend, a Pastor Dele. It's going to be three sessions. So as many of you who can make it, um, it's also, a, I think there's a registration happening there. So if there's still space, why not? Else you can connect online if and when you can. So... Thank you so very much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. This is a good place to end. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you for come up hither. Thank you for Koinonia UK. We grow from grace to grace in Jesus' name. Glory to glory in Jesus' name. Let the mighty hand of God go with you. I call you signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. The rod of the wicked will never rest around your lot. You are distinguished by the Spirit. Loving Jesus every day. Serving Jesus every day. Learning Him and living for Him in the name of Jesus. I declare that the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. May the Lord bless you. You go forth with joy. You are led forth with peace in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rests and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please greet and hug at least 10 people and then you can be on your way out. Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain